We're live. We are. And just like that, it's live. And here uh, comes Let me my just uh, hit record. Hi. We are. And just like that, it's live. Okay. Oh, that's a good sound test. There you go. Um, so, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to Your Onion Podcast. Um, first things first, I'd like to um, introduce our guest, Minira Al Kabasi. Welcome to our show. Good morning. Welcome to the craziness of uh, Your Onion Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> craziness. Uh, and the second thing I, I'd just like to say, John's just told me he didn't like the Black Panther film. Oh, that's he, he, said, <laughs> he said it was boring, so I just want to put this on record. He's just said Black Panther film is boring. Okay. So, uh, and I've heard differently, so... Wow, what a start to the show. Well, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I, I was just controversy. <laughs> Every, everybody said how good the movie was. But I'm also have to say that I understand that the first because they're building a franchise, like as, as I mentioned, they're building a franchise. So the first one is just developing the story and the characters. So this is only the beginning. <laughs> I'm just hearing excuses so, here. It's, it's, it's so the movie was boring. The movie was very <laughs> slow and boring. It was truly very slow and boring. It wasn't slow. It was. It was nothing but slow. Come on. It was very. Compare, what were you comparing it to? Are you an action? I am a Marvel. Are you into sci-fi? I am a Marvel, You're into fan. A Marvel fan. I'm a superhero fanatic. I love it all. And this was by Marvel, yeah. Yes, it was. Yeah. Marvel Studios, everything. So. Even Stan Lee was in the movie. He made his little cameo as he always does. But I'm sure the watch. Wait for the second one because the first one is building the story. Because I said this about <laughs> even Spider uh, Superman. The first Superman was terribly slow and boring until they. They developed the story in the first story. Well, I'm not into the Marvel movies, so maybe really? that's why I liked it. So, so it was action. Not it was too like I don't keep up with all of them. I didn't see all of them, so maybe that's why I liked it. So, if you're comparing it to like Guardians of the Galaxy, so Guardians of the Galaxy, yeah, what that was good. That's amazing. That's a like the story keeps you going, so and it, it gets oh yeah, it's uh, yeah. So well, I haven't seen the film, so I can't judge. You haven't seen Black Panther? No. I've just heard reports. Uh, no, no, no spoilers. <laughs> we'll have no anything. It's just after you see that, oh, and then we'll discuss will, it again. <laughs> yeah, we'll have a we'll have a little review on it. So you have to go now. <laughs> it was a bit slow and a little bit boring to me. Um, the fight scenes were all right. It's, all right. Yeah, it was just uh, what they just mediocre, went mediocre. Just <laughs> no, there was a lot, the but it's just. Are you seeing too many? Is that is it just? The same Marvel cliche, is that what you're saying? Yeah. It didn't have... Well, not cliche, not because cliche. some of the... The way, the way they set up, it's just... It was a cliche movie. It was just yeah, that's a what I mean. story, fight scene, story, driving scenes, because they had quite but, a few... But the message of the movie was so appropriate for... for it's humanity, right? Yeah. It's uh, somebody it, who like, has all the power in the world to yeah. fix the rest of the world, but stands by and watches. Considering everything that's been happening... Okay. That's very appropriate message. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's the most important thing of the movie. I think they wanted to deliver a message considering everything that's happening in the, let's say, the black community in the U.S. Mm. I think that's what they wanted to do. Just going to move that closer to you. Yeah. 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 It got a little bit heated in America because people were going to the movie all dressed up and stuff. And they're saying, why are you guys dressing up? And they're like, have you not seen Star Wars fans? Have you not yeah. seen uh, the Harry Potter fans? So there was a little bit. It did raise a little bit of controversy and a little bit of news. Oh, okay. Yeah. Anyways, going. The movie was a bit slow and. A anyway, I like to uh, start show with a bit of. Uh, yeah. And I'm back as well. And that's so. it. I was about to say, welcome <laughs> back, Stephen. So you've been gone for about four weeks now. Yes. Um, so I had a great holiday. I went to France. I went to Les Arc, um skiing with the family. Uh, my sister-in-law works there as a kind of a. Uh, child care and she's married to a uh, ski instructor so we went there for the first time beautiful the snow was beautiful and then unfortunately I had a phone call from uh, my family to say that my father was taken ill and well he, he's been ill for years but uh, yeah he um, I flew back and he died um, the day that I arrived so I got to see him so then I spent three weeks in the UK sorting out uh, funeral arrangements with my mum and uh, that was an experience just to see the whole process of uh, how the whole process of someone dying and um, you know the, f the whole funeral arrangement so yeah first time in my life oh, sorry. Uh, thank you 
condolences. Yeah, thank you. So, yeah, it's been a bit of a, an emotional roller coaster. But here I am, I'm back. <laughs> well, welcome back. We're happy yeah. to have you. Thank you. And you've done a I good job. And you've done a good job, too. <laughs> With two weeks off on my own part. So we had a two-week little stall, and then we got back to it last week, and now we're back with you this week. So. Yeah. And with a fantastic So you didn't yeah. host anyone? Uh, last week we had he Elizabeth did. in. Yes. Oh, okay. uh, she's also doing Doha Heat podcast, mm. and she's the life coach. Oh, okay. So with her and I, we had a discussion about starting a business, because uh, she's actually gone through it. So okay. we got her take on it. Um, going through the process. I was actually so considering taking a certificate in life coaching. In life coaching? Oh, really? Yeah. What, what I'm not, in, like, I tried, I was thinking about the idea of getting a master's degree, but then I was like, I'm not into studying anymore. <laughs> 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 I've done my part, so I'm thinking taking maybe a certificate or something in life coaching. I think that will be more down my alley. Well, when you well, John, you you you've introduced us to Manira. You brought you invited Manira yeah. um, to the show. Yes. So what? Where where is the connection? Uh, and kind of give us a little bit of a history between the two of you, and uh, maybe Manira, you can give us a kind of an introduction to uh, you know a little bit about you. Yeah. Okay, I'll start. Oh, okay, you can start. <laughs> uh, Munira and I met in my previous job in real estate. So when I was doing real estate, Munira was interested in looking at um, some rental properties and some investment properties. So our, she called me up. Uh, we had a few meetings together. We gave a few options. Um, we looked at the portfolio and so on and so forth. And then from there, we just started talking more on a business level of what do you do, what do I do, where can we work, um, is there any opportunities, and we kind of just hit it off. Our The way of thinking is very alike, um, which I really enjoyed, We're open and honest with each other, and it just kind of it matched. Mm -hmm. So I left my previous real estate company to go under her sponsorship. And then we started thinking up because I came to her with an idea as well, and she was very interested in the idea. So that idea is still going on, yeah. that I keep mentioning and being very vague about. You know the full idea. Manira, he has he comes into my <laughs> office with all his ideas, so I, you know I give you. So you know everything. I give you credit for uh, <laughs> being able to sit there and uh, listen. Well, I'm still on the same no, idea. They're, that they're the always a good idea. <laughs> it's just about they're bringing them to good. fruition. That's they're it. They're all good. Yeah. So I introduced and I I explained the idea. My I have an idea in real estate okay so it's um, it's real estate related and we want to hopefully um, evolve it into actually becoming a business so I, I explained it to her she was interested in getting involved so we did partner up on that mm -hmm. and now together we've just been accepted into cubic yeah. oh, congratulations so, uh, we're starting today yes so wow when you're and I okay, start so today going to cubic every week we'll be able to hear an update of how it's going are yeah. you allowed to uh, talk about it I will find out today, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be signing an NDA. Yeah. You're not allowed well, to say anything on the podcast. It's a big mystery. Yeah. Um, it's a 10-week program. I think program. The, the way how it goes, but not talking about our idea for specific, you go, you, you basically, they set you up to being a business man or a woman. Mm. So you take a classes on how to do business, all these things, how to run a business, and then later... You, I think they have like a speaker, they call it a speaker's day, and then you have all the investors in, you pitch your idea, and whoever is interested, they will, uh, they will say yes, like yeah. basically, yeah. yeah. And I think a cubic will be like insuring you or something, I think that's how it goes. Yeah. yeah. I got the breakdown um, speaking, I called um, Sophie again, one of our past guests. Mm -hmm. um, if you there's about 40 to 50 companies are brought in mm -hmm. uh, seven to eight companies are accepted to get a grant from cubic yeah. uh, and then if they after three months of being in business after because the whole 10-week process is about you creating your business mm -hmm. um, and putting bringing it to the market and actually launching it so after the 10 weeks when you're ready to, right when you're ready to launch they're giving you a grant to to get you launched nice so after that, after three months of being in business within the market, then they offer you more money at a stake in your company. And as far as I understand that, you're allowed to buy your stake back within the first two years yeah. of business. Yeah. And at the same price that they bought in for. And if, so they, if you don't? It, then they're just... Uh, they own, just yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. They own. I would sure. say most companies want, or most people who are starting the business want to get out. Yeah, no, absolutely. 
So yeah, that's what we're starting. Same with QDB. Yeah. Same with QDB. Yeah. They will be like they will have like ownership in the place until you pay off. Until Most pay people try to pay off the debt yeah, before. Yeah, no, I can understand yeah. it. Of course, because yeah. everybody wants to be their own own boss at the end. And do you think QDB could be the next call of point of call for for you guys if after Cubic? Point of call? Yeah, we. So you do the whole Cubic, mm -hmm. and they give you the whole training bit, mm -hmm. and then you could go to QDB and ask for a, a business loan. Well, Cubic is actually giving you. A grant to start. No, I understand that, but they so don't give you need a more bigger. Money. QDB are meant yeah, to give you QDB a bit potentially, yeah. potentially. But we have ten weeks to try to earn as much as we can. <laughs> <laughs> that's anyway. That's my my mission. My head is down, and I'm yeah. plowing away in business. So I'm just trying to make a little. Oh well, I wish you both all the best Thank of luck. You. So that's yeah how we met. Yeah. And I enjoy listening. I'll be looking forward to. We'll give the the weekly updates. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, so now I've learned about her other businesses mm -hmm. that she works on. Um, she's very into health and so on, but I'll let you elaborate on what you're doing and yes. I wanted to introduce and her. And do you have any other crazy partners like John? No. <laughs> oh, <okay>. <laughs> They're not crazy. <laughs> He's the only crazy oh, one. Okay. Uh, where do we start? So, taking from that, we have Good Life Market, which is a healthy and organic dietary. Uh, market and then. And why did you go into that market? Is it something that you've always been passionate about? The whole food. It or started maybe how many years ago? Four, five years ago. Yeah. When I started losing weight and then I became obsessed with it. That's <laughs> when it started. <laughs> so that's that's a big of of a long story. But if we talk about why I started specifically, because I used to whenever I travel, I would come back with a big suitcase of everything, of every protein bar there is, and there's every powder and every like superfood and everything like I can get my hands on. I yeah. was like, that's enough. I should like I should <laughs> like I can't and then there is I would constantly be ordering off Amazon and then I was like, this got yeah, to this stop. Got to, yeah. yeah. That's that's where the idea came from. I was like, people should have like and even here in the community you will have to go to three to four places in order to get everything mm -hmm. you want. You would have to go to Lulu and then Carrefour and then Mega Mart and in order just, I'm talking about like uh, like a person, a regular person who goes on a diet or a healthy lifestyle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And th it can be costly and then it can be tiring mm -hmm. and it can be like you, you will be all over the place in, or in order to get everything you want. So I was like, people need to get everything under one roof. Yeah. So that's the plan. That's where it came from. Okay. Yeah. And how long ago was that when you uh, saw the one light and ago? decided to... One year ago. Okay. Back in October 2016. Okay. Yes. That's when it all started. Like, I was suddenly, I was like, I want to do it. And how's that journey been? <laughs> 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 yeah. Okay. Where do start? <laughs> Deeper. Oh. I was just I posted something like what did like the quote said it was the best of times and the worst of times. <laughs> I was like if anyone ever asked me how the journey was until I got to good life market. It was the best of times and the worst of times. I think you get to know so much about yourself when owning a business and it really like it disciplines you in a way to be more patient, more understanding and in a way you have to be also to to know your rights and to how and you get to know different types of people and mm -hmm. how to handle them and oh that's that's a different story on how to handle people and then there is the business aspect and there is the ethical as aspect of business and you like you will be surprised of how diverse and how different like ethically business is handled here yeah, yeah. yeah so that's a big issue i think that's the most challenging issue here in doha because ethically speaking and in, in business wise people don't adhere to what they say people mm. don't stick to what they say so that's the most that was the most challenging thing and had you done any business before that no that so this was your one. first business yeah. venture, yes. and do you, how do you see yourself um, now compared to when you first started? Do you, can you picture it, picture yourself when you first went on this journey if, to yeah. where you are now? I think 
I'm I'm surprised to be honest mm. that I've made this so far. <laughs> I because at so many points I was like I'm going to give up and I think the old me would have would have mm. given up. But I was like and I had so much support. So I think that made that played a huge part in, in all of this. Yeah. I think if I was maybe alone I would have I would have said yes and I would have stopped at any point. Yeah. But but again you have to have like you have to start a business on a really strong base of why you're doing this business mm. and and I wrote a list and I always tell people this like there is a 10 reasons list of why I wanted to open this business and I always tell people on the opening of the good life market I will say the, those lists yeah, yeah. so I and yesterday I was sitting at my computer and the, the list is there so my sisters know where it is now. <laughs> so the list is there I had I have it there stuck there and I was like and I was reading over it, and it gives me strength just to keep going, to keep doing what you're yeah, doing. Yeah, absolutely. In yeah. the low times, to have that list, to yeah. just remind yourself why you're actually doing it. Yeah. It is, it is challenging. And I always tell people, like, if you hate someone in Doha, tell them to open a business. They will, <laughs> they will <win. laughs> So they can go through it themselves. Yeah. And be a better person. Yeah. You touched on something in the very beginning about the challenges, but it's when you're dealing with other people that are trying to open the business, you're trying to use to open the business yeah. or work with yeah. to open the business. The, the, what I'm finding generally, people don't say no or they don't say I can't. Yeah. So they're saying yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And then they're not delivering on what they're, mm. they're saying yes. So that's one of the challenges. So you have to always ask the right questions and make sure that these people can deliver or even stay on top of them because if you don't stay on top of people they'll just sit down yeah. and not do like what you have no idea how many people I've sat down with and they said yes 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 <laughs> yes and then they disappear on you and then you hear nothing so it's like yeah, but I think it's the, the knowledge here in Doha needs to change and it will happen I think it's I think it, we're a growing a growing country in mm. terms of business it's just picking up in terms of Qatari business, like mm. in terms of locals. So I think it's just the knowledge that needs to be changed. I think for the most part, let's say, I think foreigners were the mo like, were on the market, the mm. people who's actually working in the market, and most of the time w locals were not. And then I think this is what's changing. Locals are taking, now are more into business and more into owning businesses. So I think, that's where it has to change. Yeah, because no, absolutely. To be, maybe I think this is what I think, and may I might be wrong, but I think, in a way, foreigners know how to set up a business and how to handle their businesses, but not certainly. Well, we give that impression. <laughs> <laughs> is it? But I think Qatar is not so much, not so much in terms of how to how things run. Mm. Let's say. And how things should be, and how they should like, uh, like, stay on top of people. I think yeah. this is where we, I think we we lack strength. Because there there has been a huge drive by the government, hasn't there, yeah. with the Cubic, you know, these incubation centres, uh, QDB, yeah. really to, you know, encourage locals to have their own businesses. No, they're e even looking into. I don't know if they're doing, they will do another institution or another organization, but the governor of QCB, he said so many times that we need another institution like QDB or another organization like QDB. And he was very encouraging in so many, I think, he, in so many opening, mm. like when he talks, he said, we need to encourage big companies to have trust in smaller companies. And this is what what hasn't been happening and this is where we had so many trouble because we're trying to maybe get a loan from another place other than QDB and this will not happen here no. people don't have trust in other people yeah. like they don't no really, way yeah, they don't want to take any more risk yeah no there there is a lot of that and we've had that situation where you know even banks don't yeah um, if you're not a certain size they won't give you yeah a loan. and it doesn't make sense some some banks without, without naming names, <laughs> yeah, they will know. ask you if you're a startup company and you're, you're trying to get a loan, they will say, oh, you need to have like something million in your account. I was like, if I have that <laughs> amount, why will <laughs> I come to you? Yeah. Why no, will I sure. come for a loan? And yeah. it doesn't make sense. And this needs to change as yeah. well. This is a huge challenge for 
كتري بزنس ما and in a way you have to take that stress off from QDB because it's too much the way yeah. it's happening now it's yeah. too much it all, yeah to ask the, you have to ask, pose the question of how long can QDB keep this up yeah. of giving out these these loans and so on if but are they actually I thought QDB weren't actually giving the loans they were just like acting as the guarantor uh, to the bank so the banks actually yes. give the loan and QDB are like the guarantor yeah. oh, is that how it works yes, yes. they're not an actual yeah. bank so they do the assessment. They do. They analyze your study. Yeah. And then they go to the banks and mm. yeah, they got arrangements with the but banks. But there is it. like a big percentage of. I'm not sure if I should say this. Contest. But I know the exact percentage <laughs> of how, like, in terms of food and beverages, like the failed projects. The failed so projects. Yeah. Projects. Yeah. But I'm not sure if I should say this. It's seven percent. Like failing. Failing. Yeah, but that's that's not a bad number. That's not a bad number. But taking into consideration like how big the country is, it is a big number. And but I thought it would be and fifty fifty more or less. But how big and how big the loans are. So most so loans are like They're in the millions, aren't they? Yeah. But that's only F and B side, right? F and B side. Oh okay. Yeah. And I think they're reluctant to start to continue funding. I think the they F&B. S- they s- they stopped funding unless you have like a very unique idea. Mm. I think they stopped funding FMB, yeah. I think the next big push is going to be digital. I think digital, they're, yeah. They're really looking at yeah. digital. Cause all Again, f- the governor did say this yeah. so many times. It's been in the newspaper. Yeah. Um, well, we've got 5G now. We already have just brought out uh, the 5G now. What? I don't know what any of this means. I, I really don't. So we went from <laughs> 3G <laughs> to 4G <laughs> to know, 5G. Right? So I haven't read up on 5G, so I can give you. And I'm still on it. Like English. even then, then there's 4K <laughs> I, TVs. I now. can't see the difference. To be honest, I don't see the difference. I don't see the idea behind it. Then. Is it just faster internet? That's all we're claiming is that it's faster now. Yes. It does it do anything else? Not that I'm aware. Just faster internet, I think. It will be 10G, and it will be still the same. If there's any viewers, <laughs> still still is anyone way. watching? Yeah. Uh, the three people that are watching. Does anybody know anything, know anything about, about the 5G network? <laughs> Or if we could, or we do, could uh, it's funny because I have some friends come to my house because I have a, just an HD TV. Mm-hmm. So when they're watching my TV, they're like, they can't handle the way the picture looks because it's so clear. They're like, mm-hmm. no, I like it the original. And original. then I'm, and then now there's even the next one, right? <laughs> and I because I, I don't see it the way they see it anymore. But I remember right, when I used to go to the shops. Yeah. What do they mean by original? Well, just Where it's blurry, a bit grainy I and blurry. <laughs> no, I don't know, pixelated. They, they can't handle the whole brightness. But now they've even upgraded that to 4K. Yeah. Yeah. Which 4K. is even clearer, crisper. Just and comes out. Yeah. So that goes to the same premise between the internet. So 4G was not enough for us. I guess the normal people aren't benefiting from these speeds. It's all about the. Maybe it's business and. I think it would be. You have to be really into the. Well, let's see. Let's see. But if, uh, if there is a push for the whole digital. Um, domain that's brilliant for them. It's more digital okay, and yeah, if we're uh, industrial. From that perspective, now, yeah. then that's a great thing. So now you're, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah I didn't think of that. Now anyway, they're pushing for IT more and for industrial businesses more. Yeah. Anyway, back to good life. Yes. So are you there? Have you got Have you got a premises? Have you got a shop? Have yes. You, can people go? We in? will o- be open hopefully by the end of the month. Super. Yes. yes. So that'll be the first market that sells dietary and food. We can't say all <laughs> organic food. Yes. Yeah, I, want, I want to say organic. <laughs> some organic some organic. But it will be yeah, yeah. organic yeah. dietary supplements, proteins, and whatever. I would look. love to say organic, but that's a big promise. Why are you not saying all organic? Because it's not all organic. Because some protein bars and some stuff are processed, so it's not all organic. Okay. Yes. So there's although, protein bars. Although, although healthy, but not certainly or, not organic. Okay. So, so you can get protein bars that yes. are organic? Yeah. Mm. Will it be a big store? What kind of square meter? 86, not not so big. That's not bad. Yeah. My sister was, we we went by t- yesterday and she was like, I thought it will be a big one. I was like, what? <laughs> what, like a big supermarket? Oh, come on. What did you think? <laughs> well, you've got to start somewhere. But it's, it's good. Yeah. And where will it be? And where will it be, yeah. It will be on the pearl. I love how you're asking questions like you don't know anything. <laughs> well, I don't know anything. He knows everything. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing it for the yeah. public. <laughs> it, will be, it will be in the Pearl, uh, Porto Arabia Tower 25. What's the stores around it? F45. And, and then we have Fleur Cafe. Yes. That's 
Does no, that my can I just then? have a go at the pearl? Because every time I go to the pearl, I always get lost. And but no. people just that live ask, on the pearl, them for the place you're all, all used to that. Where the parking is the parking issue that I find difficult. It's like, oh yes, it's Tower Twenty Five. Yeah. But is there parking at Tower Twenty Five? There's parking at Tower Twenty Two. Is 22. it easy? Mm-hmm. There's parking at Tower Twenty Two, but all the inlets have valet parking if you're willing to pay the thirty reals, I think. Yeah. But then Tower Seventeen, Tower, I think it starts with. For sure, I can give you these towers: Tower Eleven, Tower Seventeen, and Tower Twenty Two, and Tower Thirty. I know that side. It all have parking. So parking for the general whenever. public. <laughs> for the general public, right. it'll yeah. say retail parking. Okay. And you go around to those towers, and then you can park. That's the most thing people complain about when I say it's on the pad. Yes. Everyone complains about this. Yeah. Why did you choose the pad? Yeah. There's no parking. <laughs> yeah. It's not that hard. Yeah. If you know where you're yeah, parking, you're, you're right. used I to it. You live in. Maybe we should give. Uh, yeah. Let's have the, the pole on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. come on this show. Tell us exactly where Absolutely. all that was, uh, yes. retail parking. Who was thinking of the whole layout? Yeah. But it is simple. It is. If you know which towers the parkings are at. Mm. I, can't, yeah. I don't know why I always start at, because I know Tower 11, I know Tower 17, I know Tower 22, and I know Tower 30. Okay. Yeah. But at the beginning, I think there's even Tower 9 or 10 has parking. So now I'm guessing at that point. So are you going to have like a, a launch? Yes. Invite but all the media and... I. I was talking the other day and my sister didn't like it because I said I'll do the grand opening later, maybe in a year or so. Yeah. Because I want to open and I want to just establish the business and have a run of things and see how things run and and, and then maybe do a grand opening oh, okay. in a year or so. So I think that's the plan. So maybe have a small soft launch soft just to launch, let people... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just tell people that we're open. Yes. But like to have all the media and all people and everything. No, I, d- I don't think that's a good thing to do now. I want to do it when I can enjoy it. And mm-hmm. I don't think we're in that place. Yeah. Yeah. Because no, John knows all the hardships we've been through. <laughs> it's not easy. It's not easy. No, yeah. I can believe it. Yeah. But we, we, we will. We will have a grand opening. Excellent. Yes. And Adrian, sorry, Adrian says back to 5G. <laughs> oh, okay. Comments Thank you, saying that 5G is better for live streaming. Oh, oh so okay. that's good for us. Yeah, that's good for us. That's good. Um, yeah, and they made a couple comments about the camera angle. Oh, see? <laughs> yes, sorry, that's, no, that's, that's intended. <laughs> she doesn't want to be on camera. Not fully on camera. Fully so. on camera, so we've got the side shot. Yes. So anyone watching Facebook Live, apologies. Mm. So, any other businesses that you can tell us about? Uh, wait, before no, we get into that, I wanted to ask, how are you marketing yourself in oh, yes. for, Myself. for Good Life? For Good Life. What, what sort of marketing are you going to follow up If on? we go by the company business profile, it says I'm a part vegetarian, that's been on a healthy journey. Because, what? okay, now let's talk about how I got into health. I was, by the numbers, I was obese. And then I got into, I started losing weight, but then I was like, I started experimenting with everything. I've done every kind of diet you can think of. I did paleo, I did vegan, I did vegetarian. And so I'm like the embodiment of experiments. I did everything, (laughs) I tried everything. And then I was, and I just got into health and like your mind changed. And uh, as I went into it more and more, and I think what changed is, and this is what I always advise people. I was like, read, start reading. And this is where I was reading everything. I was watching every documentary. And it just changes because once you feed your brain and once you get this info about health and how your body works, you start being appreciative for your body. So I think that's how I market myself. I, I seek being healthy. I'm not the healthiest person. <laughs> I, I think I can be healthier, but I just, I believe in balance, let's Absolutely. say. Absolutely. Yeah. Same here. After trying everything, I believe in balance. I was like, I'm, I'm more into being vegetarian because I feel better when I'm vegetarian, but I'm not into cutting out meat. No, I tried that. I can't. No. I love burgers so much. He knows that. <laughs> I was like, if it wasn't for burgers, I would have been a vegetarian in That's a heartbeat. That's how you guys get on. You love burgers. Yeah, we, yes. <laughs> we were going to do like a burger. <laughs> Go to every, well, we were trying to get to um, Burger Festival. Yeah. And I was ready to eat every one at every stand. Yeah. 
bur- and yeah, burgers are good. I could I could do without meat. I could I could potentially live without meat. The problem that I'm facing now is just not getting enough protein, which what I think because I've done the macros and so on, and I'm not getting enough protein. When mm. Because I'm, if you don't know, I'm vegan right now at this point in time. That's what I do every year around this time. And to do your protein to your carbohydrate ratio, it's very, very difficult without meat. I'm finding. Um, I guess you're gonna, and I'm not doing any protein shakes. I still haven't found any of the protein shakes. So I'm trying to find foods that are high in protein and low in carbs, which is another difficult thing. When I did the, when I asked the dietitian to do a vegetarian. <laughs> But I'm not solely vegetarian. I told her, can we do it? A veg- can we do a vegetarian one where I can still build muscles? I told her I I still eat salmon and tuna, and what she did, she put salmon and tuna in every day, and then I realized I don't like salmon and tuna that much. <laughs> so th- so that's why I that's why I believe in balance. You can't mm. have something every day, and then again you can't. To be honest, I tried. I've been there, and I told you this. I've been where you you're uh, you are now. I think. It's very hard. I don't know how people do it, vegetarian people. Some people are bodybuilders. And they're vegan. And yeah, they're yeah, vegan they're and absolutely. vegetarian. Yeah. And That's whose websites I've been reading. I have no idea how they do it. But it's protein powder because there are high protein foods or powders or milks, like the pea milk, the yeah, purple. Yeah. And then you have protein rice powder, uh, protein rice powder. So there are supplements that mm. you take. But I don't think you can do it on a regular food diet. I don't think it's, I don't think it's possible. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. I'm sticking to 2,000 calories. I need 175 grams of protein and 175. That would be grams. controversial. I think everyone will maybe comment on this or will be. By all means, comment and teach me. I'm ready to learn. <laughs> I, I, because I'm a, I'm a very, I'm very, very new. I've been going vegan for 13 years. I do it only for 46 days, a short period of time. However, this is the first year I've actually incorporated macros. Yeah. Macros being your fat to mm-hmm. your c- carbohydrates to your protein um, and intake. Yeah. Because I want to get to a certain body type and I want to work as I'm working out. And it's so difficult to it's get so protein. Difficult. What kind of Even body type are you? Is there, is there a certain... Am I? Yeah. I don't know. At this point, I'm just average, I think. And I'm trying to get so a little bit more. So you didn't do your BMI test before you... I've never done a BMI test. You should, though. Yeah, you should do. I'll do it after. What maybe. will you compare it to, yeah, though? Yeah, I, pictures. <laughs> I do pictures of weight. Oh, you do pictures. So I, do, the, I oh, have yeah. the pictures because I use the MyFitnessPal, I think it's called. Yeah, that's good. So I do pictures oh, on a weekly good. basis. Yeah. I have my weight on a weekly basis. I have my clothes. My belt is mm. my biggest. Yeah, that's true. Because yeah. losing an inch on the waist is mm. different. It's different. Than, and I can feel all my clothes. Yeah. Because these pants that I'm wearing now used to be tight, and this morning oh. I put them on, and they're already loose. That's the best feeling. That's good. It's such a good feeling. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. But the thing is, even with when you're counting macros, even when when, you, when you're not vegan or vegetarian, it's still very hard. It's still very hard to build muscles. You'll have to eat enormous amount of meat, and then and again, this like it was an assurance to me of how I don't I don't like eating big amount of chicken or mm. meat um, I, some, not something I enjoy I think I came not to enjoy after everything I think if if anyone is interested if they want to see the cowspiracy documentary I think this is what ruined my relationship the cowspiracy, so <laughs> the cow-spiracy. no that's a good documentary of how like how like animals are being treated and meat and meat is being processed and how it's not very not very good for your health if you eat it in a big no, amount exactly. so I think that's how I'm like I can't eat so much of it no and like even body wise when you get into health after a while you start being very noticeable of how your body change mm-hmm. and how your body react to food and and I always tell people like be attentive to how your body feels after you eat a certain thing and I think the culture here they're more into eating and they will complain or saying oh my body felt like this after I've eaten this but still they won't do anything they, do they anything. will not stop eating no. the thing that made them maybe like not comfortable or something mm. but they will still 
So I think this is what needs to be changed. If not comfortable, if some of your body doesn't feel right after eating a certain thing, it has to stop. But and I think what's been happening here, people keep eating the same thing and keep having the same issue. And after a while, your body reacts, and then they get surprised. Oh, why did I get this? And they start going to hospitals, trying to figure things out. But You've been pushing your body to the limit. This is it. That, that's yeah. that's what annoys me is that people push their bodies to a point and then they expect the hospitals and the doctors to exactly. come up with a cure. Yeah. yeah, it's just like no, but you've been treating your body badly by what you've been eating yeah. or lack of exercise. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Come on, it's got to give in. This yeah. is your temple. Your temple. Yes. There you go. This is your temple. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and like even like for milk, everyone because I keep harassing coffee shops here and there. <laughs> <laughs> and I call them out about not having plant-based or other alternatives of milk. And for me, it came down to a point where it's like, like you said, it's not, it's not worth it to keep fighting. Mm. My body doesn't feel right when I, when I drink, when I have dairy milk, mm. when I have like regular milk. But so it came to a point where it's not worth it. I, I can't keep putting my body into this because I know at some point it will do something back and they will not like it. Like when I, have, when I had my gallbladder, I was very, I was like, how did this happen to me? Blah, blah, blah. And I was healthy when I had my gallbladder issue and when I had the surgery. I was already three years into my healthy lifestyle. Yeah. But I think what it assured me having having the issue while still healthy is that it will backfire. It will backfire to you because what happens is your body is like it's accumulative. What people don't get, it's a cumulative, cumulative process. Mm. So my gallbladder issue wasn't because I'm healthy like most people think. They said, "Oh, because you were not eating so much because you did all this diet." No, it was because of all the fatty food I've been eat, like I've been consuming till this point of age. So this is the main issue with, with pe- like, don't push your body so much. So do you see yourself being, like, the ambassador for good, good living, good life? See, That's one of the reasons I said. I said, if I create any, I'll share one reason. Okay. If I create any type of movement or an awareness in the health, in terms of health here in the community, I will die happier. I will yeah. be very, very happy if one person changes something about their life or decide to do something about their life that will be amazing and do you think that will happen do you think that people will, will happen listen for sure yes yeah? yes yes that's great because when you when you do go around town there is a lot of fast food joints and i've always said you know come on you the country can be in control of you know what restaurants can be here yeah and there should be a push for healthier food yeah there, there should be a push, but again, it comes up from the people. Yeah, yeah. You have to educate the people because yeah. the same because who who gets the franchise? Who brings the businesses in? It is the people. It so is the people. yeah, yeah. There's so I think once you change the knowledge and once you start to like spread awareness, that one it will happen. Yeah, yeah. And this is this is the goal. But it'd be a good marketing tool as well yeah. if you're like an ambassador for the business as well. Inshallah. <laughs> That's what we hope for. Inshallah. Yeah. Inshallah. No, I wish you all the best for that one. Thank you. So, uh, have you got any other questions on this good life business? Good life? No, we can move on from good yeah. life. Mm. I think I wish you all the success. Oh, I can't you. wait for it to open. Yes. Nice. Make it easy. I don't have to run all the way up to Lulu. <laughs> no, you'll be a customer. Lulu, yeah. Well, Lulu has. Um, a little bit of a vegan section now. They've been growing ever since, and it's actually mm-hmm. a Canadian product that they put on their shelves. Eves they have, which I which I've been eating because that's the only place I'm getting my proteins from. What's Eves? But it'd be nice. It's a soy-based meat-like substitute. Okay. Um, it's funny because I read online if you if you're eating these, then just eat meat. But I don't really? do it. Yeah. Why? Because they're saying that if you if you're craving the meat, then just eat meat. But I'm, I'm not doing it to eat, crave the meat. I'm doing it because I need the protein. Yeah. That's the only place I'm finding protein is with tofu and these supplements <laughs> or these. I love how they say, if you crave it, if yeah, you're having it, just people, eat meat. Yeah. It's not the same people. <laughs> it's not the but same. But there are organic, well, even on, there are organic meats available in Qatar. They are. Are there? Yeah. There's an organic 
beef hamburger joint available in on the Pearl. Oh. Yeah. So there are options. Okay. You mean the Elevation Burger. Elevation, yeah. Elevation Burger claims that they are organic. I love Elevation. Organic. Most people don't. I love Elevation Burger. I don't have any problems with it. Yeah. It's all the stuff that I you don't put on top that probably... I don't <laughs> understand <laughs> why people don't like it. I've never I heard something like it. Most locals don't. Oh, really? I don't know why. Are there any other ones that are organic? Not to my knowledge, no. I wonder. No. Hmm. So yeah, they're organic beef. So I don't know what pe why people don't... If people crave meat yeah. but won't eat meat... That's where my confusion lies, because I don't, I don't crave the meat. I'm not doing it for the flavor, for to taste, but everything is trying to make you taste the meat. Yeah, because yeah. like, they have all the flavor. Yeah, that's nice. that's yeah. how you know it's a good burger or not <laughs> if you no, can, if, yeah. if you can't taste the meat. Yeah. yeah. So it'd be nice to have it all under one roof, is what yeah. I'm trying to say. That yeah. you can go to a one-stop shop and get everything you need in one go. I'm trying a whole bunch of different things, and I have to go from shop to shop to shop to find everything I need, which yeah. is a bit frustrating. And like you say, it does get a bit expensive. And how? So I, well, actually, before moving on, how has it been um, shipping in all the food? Has that been an experience? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's another. Well, what? <laughs> how much time? We have there? so much. <laughs> <laughs> it's again, it's a trust issue, and then people, I think. Now this is not an issue here. It's an issue with other markets that's from other countries. Oh, okay. They don't see like Qatar as a big market in order to invest in because in order to ship in food, you have to go through a process. And I understand from their point of view, it's a lengthy process and it's a, a very tiring process. There are so many papers you have to have and there are so many certificates you have to have beco before exporting to Doha. Again, it's a, it's a joint, I think, now that I said this point, because, again, I think we're very demanding here. We are, not, not, <laughs> not me, but I think the government, the government is very demanding in terms of the certificate and in terms of the papers they... This will give me, give me so much trouble. <laughs> but I think they're very demanding in terms of the papers and the certificates, and it makes businesses very hard to run and, and very hard to achieve. I think if there were not... A few laws that I have issues that with, if they were but not there, business will be so much easier. But isn't the paperwork there to make sure that the quality and the product is right? It, what, what is the issue not, that you're... Not necessarily. No. There is like only this one issue about having the product translated and like being stamped and translated before it comes in. Almost all GCC countries don't have that. No? Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. You can bring it and then you can translate it in-house and then have it. This is this is the main issue. That's the main one. Yeah, because most of... and it's a, You have to look at it globally. The health industry is a very young industry. And most businesses, most companies are small businesses. So when you tell them, oh, I want the product to be translated uh, before importing here or before exporting to Doha, they will they will not go for it. They mm. don't see why they should go for it. Uh, like you have the issue of me being a small business, so I can't order big amounts. And then for them, it's not, it's not it, worth it. It's not worth it. Yeah. yeah, it's not worth the investment of time. And like they don't see it. They don't see the like the GCC market as a market mm. they, they can invest in. So. There is a few things. It's 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 it goes both ways. It go there. It's a joint problem, I think, from our side and from other companies not seeing that there is a demand. Yeah. And there is the issue of of demand here because most companies still don't see how. Like there is a healthy community here, and they still think there is no no demand. That's a shame, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. No, we're gonna prove them wrong. You're gonna prove yes. them wrong. I'm going to try. Absolutely. I want to go longer than four, six days <laughs> yeah. this time around. You can be an ambassador as well. Be healthy. Be healthy. I feel a lot better. When yeah. I, yeah. A lot better. I don't know why I always regress. By the time December, October, November, December comes along, I'm just back to my... Oh, really? Yeah. It's well, always the same. Same pattern. We're with you, John. We're going to make sure that doesn't help. happen. <laughs> I need help this <laughs> we're time. Gonna <laughs> make sure we're it's all about moderation within moderation, the Moderation, yeah. Not yeah, but it, it. it's how that moderation starts, where you go, well, actually... It all starts with Easter. <laughs> 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 it just goes downhill from there. No. 
it goes downhill from you there. You start from Don't Eastern. Don't do it, John. It was really funny. I can even take it one step further because I used to be a cigarette smoker. <gasps> yeah. Shush. My dad was listening. <laughs> you never knew. Uh, but I used to smoke cigarettes. And I could stop cold turkey for 46 days without any problems. Mm -hmm. And then I would just, on Easter, after dinner, light up a cigarette and continue on smoking my <laughs> smoking. And then I quit for five years, which I was happy about. And then I started it again when I got, got to Qatar. Mm. And then, I, but I'm now happy to say that I'm a. And why did you start? Why did I when start? When you came over here, was it was it the stress or was it I just don't know. I just the cheap cigarettes? I'll tell this to all s non or all smokers who are ex-smokers: mm. don't ever take that one drag. Don't mm. ever take that one even that one puff. And it's uh, the oddest thing about cigarettes is that you take a drag of a cigarette and you tell yourself how awful it is, mm. but you'll go for the second one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I don't, I chalk it up to nicotine. Nicotine is very, very, very addictive. Mm. It's, it's, you don't think about it. And if you ask any smoker, they'll never, they'll never be addicted to nicotine. Mm. They don't, they just want it for the hot, the, to pass the time mm. or to, to just, they'll never say that they're addicted yeah. to nicotine. Yeah. I, I told him the other day we were sitting in a coffee shop that I have a certain, it's a big word, but I'll use it. I, I have a certain hate for people who smoke. I think it's a very disrespectful thing to do for yourself. So I'm like, why would you do this? Why would you smoke? Why would you do something that will jeopardize your health and your longevity? And like, for me, it, it comes to a certain point of respect I can't fully respect someone who smokes because I think you can't respect someone who doesn't respect themselves so I think you have to have a certain degree of respect and appreciation for your body and yourself not to smoke but it's like any drug it's not it's that's why that's why I hate it that's why I hate it they're unconsciously Consciously, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> anyway, they're addicted. It's, it's it, they're addicted. Yeah. You, unless you're a smoker, you don't understand that addiction. And and a lot of them, like I say, there it's they're it's denial. Yeah. When it comes to yeah. cigarettes, they're in denial. There's not nobody can tell me the one benefit. There's not one single solitary benefit that comes from smoking. Mm. But a smoker can come up with fifteen. Oh, absolutely. What will they say? Because it relieves their stress levels. Mm. Whenever they're anxious or anything, they can calm themselves down. But it. The anxious, the anxiety is coming from the need of nicotine. Yeah. So when they have, when they fill their body with nicotine, <laughs> then they're okay again, um, and they don't understand that. And when it comes to stopping cigarettes, mm. you have to want to stop. You can't mm. just stop. Yeah. And I'm telling everybody here from example, uh, from from my past, yeah. from experience. You have to want it to stop. If yeah. you don't want it, you'll never stop. You like everything ready. else, like yeah. every addiction, you even have to be ready. food. Yeah. Because it takes a lot. And thankfully, I can almost say that I've n I haven't had a craving in a long time. But sometimes those cravings they, they never go away. They they never go away. I watch people smoke and then they'll come back to me. Uh, it's weird. What do you mean? They smoke and they come back. Like if I smell it, or sometimes I oh, smell okay. it and I go ill. And you get that. Mm. Sometimes I smell it and I go ill. But other times, ew. some other times, yeah, I go <laughs> ill. And then but other and they times, look at you going, did you really make that sound? Yeah, <laughs> I look at them like ill. <laughs> But other times, it would just be like, oh, I can never smoke again, okay. But they get less and less, and they yeah. get less frequent, and they last le uh, much shorter. Because sometimes it'd be like... How long have you been... Smoke-free now? Smoke-free. I didn't count this time. Mm. Because I made a vow that I'll never put a cigarette in my mouth again, and I haven't... I and think I've my brother-in-law has been smoke-free <laughs> for six years, I think. That's I'm probably into my third or fourth yeah. year. Yeah. I'm probably into my third or fourth year without ever and I'll never take a drag. I'll never, ever. That's good. That's never. Good. I'm, I'm a casual smoker, so I will have a cigarette maybe oh once a month. Oh, my God, and they said that's month. your face. Oh <laughs> no, once a month. I have one. Oh. You know, it, it For what purpose? <laughs> <laughs> For the sake just, of it? Just, just if, I, if I'm having a drink and I, I just want a cigarette, then I have one cigarette. So I had a MOT test when I was back in the UK. And they did all these tests, and they, you have to fill in a form. Sorry, what's MOT test? I don't even know what that means. It's a health check. Okay. It's a full body health check, just to see your heart, your blood. Physical. Yeah, everything. Okay. Inside and outside. What's MOT stand for? 
Uh, oh, no, yeah. Why do you, why do <laughs> no, you have yeah, to ask MO, stuff like MOT this? MOT is uh, to know. Go get it. for your car. So every year you have to have an MOT, MOT? which you checks your car. MOT tests. Okay, go on. You continue. I'll okay, it up. so... Um, I do have my computer here for a um, reason. So there was a section about smoking. Mm -hmm. But there wasn't a section for someone like me because I just like a cigarette now and again. Oh, okay. Where they were saying, do you have one cigarette a day? 10, 20, 30. And so you could no, choose. I don't, I don't. <laughs> Nothing says once a month. Once a month. And then it said, would you like to give up? Well, no, because I only have one <laughs> now and again. I'm not. So I'm I've not. given up, basically. <laughs> no, I couldn't. Except one. No, I like it now and again. So, like uh, a cigar. Now and yeah. again, I would like to uh, have a cigar, but I'm not someone that addicted. Feel, you know, yeah. feels the need to have one. It's just now and again, when, I, when it's the right moment, when I'm having a drink. Then it's just oh yeah, quite fancy a cigarette. Mm. But once I've had it, that's it. I don't feel the need to have two, three, four. It's just like you know, felt. So I'm not in that position where I've been yeah. addicted. Yeah. That's the thing. When you are an addict, then you can never go back. Yeah. Uh, that's that's how I look at it. When you're, and that's how I put cigarettes into a boat. I was addicted to it. Mm. I saw that I wanted to not ever smoke again. So being an addiction, I can never ever go back to it mm -hmm. ever. But it's like chocolate, isn't it? People are addicted to chocolate. I was going I can to say the same thing. It, it goes for everything. Like yeah, for me, exactly. it's like the same as hot Cheetos. I have it. Hot and <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have it once a month, and then I'll, I'll crave it for like so much. And then I'll have it, and that's it. Stops. Yeah. Yeah. Mine's all junk. And though. Oreos. And Oreos. I'm and Doritos. Oreos, oh, yeah. Doritos. That was back to our first No, I can't. Day. It's not. Yeah. If anybody out there does care, it's... MOT stands for Measurement Observation Test. <laughs> okay. Well, they don't call it an MOT test, but it's... It is, full body no, health, I, oh, health okay. test. Oh, yeah. okay. I did it as health test because when I just put MOT test, it does go refer to cars, but if you yes. put it as full body MOT, MOT test. Okay. So it stands for Measurements Observations Test. Yeah, so what I, does it say? What did yours say? Um, well, because I've gone back to the UK, because normally I'm healthy healthy food juices in the morning etc but when I go back to my mum it's always butter cheese cream or the cakes yes. Full fat. So, you know yeah. and, and mums do that to you because it's yes. just like, oh my son you, you've come That's home their you know, love language. I want to give you all the best yeah. best food so I told him that and the doctor said oh, well no wonder your cholesterol is is slightly high because you're having all the all the good food or the, <laughs> the not good the good not the good <laughs> yes. food but you know. Um, high. Yeah, the cholesterol high. So he said I would see those results if um, someone had, you know, after Christmas, they they they've been celebrating, so they would have had all all that kind of rich food. So um, he said nothing. No, so there was nothing to worry about. Oh, just good. just I had a heart test. Uh, yeah. Is it a CT scan? CT. Yeah. And he said, Have you had a heart attack? No, oh my God. No. Oh. He said, Well, your results <laughs> resemble someone who's had a heart attack. Anyway. Why? Okay, well, well, what does that mean? He said, well, you're the very, very rare percentage that um, has, well, not an issue with the heart, but the heart isn't working as it should. It, when someone has a heart attack, part yeah. of the heart doesn't work properly. So he says you're fine because mm -hmm. you've never had any issue with the past, unless I've had a heart attack without knowing, and maybe I have. Oh. But <laughs> it, so I said, well, what does that mean? Am I going to die? You know, he said, no. Not to worry, it's just something that we have to Monitor. observe and... Um, Not CT scan, that's um, ECG. Did they put the little... They put all the little... Tapes, yeah, ECG, ECG. Okay. ECG. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that was the only shocking thing, but uh, apart from that, I was healthy as... Uh, well, I haven't had my blood test back, but uh, hopefully... It's good news. Good. That should be alright. But yes, I'm coming to the ripe old age of 50, so I have to... I thought I'd better have... Well, actually, it was my wife that booked the test. <laughs> <laughs> I've been thinking about it, like a man. You think about it, but you don't take any action. Yeah. Where my wife went, okay, you've been thinking about it. I'll book, book, I'll book you a test. So, uh, yeah, there you go. So anyway, well, good to know that you're healthy. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. you might have had a heart attack. Is that? The I might have done, or I'm just one of the rare cases that Strange. don't. You just have something. Strange. A little issue That's with your good. heart. Yeah. Maybe something for me to look into as well. Yeah. Getting to the ripe old age of forty. Well, they do say that people generally start at 40. So and then they can monitor every year. So you year. have a homework to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's see. I go home, yeah. Anyways.
So when I go home, I'll do, do something. <laughs> Anyway, how are we doing for time? Are um, we, uh, we've done about an hour, yeah. Okay, so, so is there anything else you want to bring up? Are you working on any other projects coming up? But I would up? love to have you come Not back in yeah. and just tell us Especially a program at all. Yes, yeah. we'll do so. Not really. We have the coffee shop coming, so that hopefully will pick up as well. Is that going to be a healthy coffee shop or just...? We will have calculated meals but not really healthy okay desserts <laughs> yeah. because after all we believe in balance so that's that's that will be it yeah exactly. you also work on recipes as well your yes. own private recipes yes personal recipes yeah and you um mostly focus all marketing on social media which yeah is your instagram account yeah. i'm mostly active on instagram, instagram account, yeah. so, so we can, we can follow you on instagram yeah. okay i look and forward we'll to put her link up as well yeah absolutely yeah. Good. Well, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for it's having me. It's been a pleasure, me. and I look forward to hearing yeah. updates. Yes. And I'm sure I'll hear it through John as well. Yes. yes. And we'll yeah. put them up, and we'll have you in again, I'm sure. Sure. Yeah. And then we'll get the cubic updates as well. No, right absolutely. <laughs> well, thank you, everyone. Thank you for tuning in on Facebook Live and uh, anyone that's listening on uh, the podcast. Uh, we'll see you next week. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye.